Here's everything you might have missed in the latest Dune Part 2 trailer. Welcome back to Nerdist News, my fellow Dunatics. I've kicked Dan out of the studio again so that I can spice things up with a breakdown for another new trailer for Dune Part 2. Or as the French would say, Dune. This latest trailer has us walking with rhythm, especially because we finally have our first look at Christopher Walken as the Padisha Emperor, and should damn, does he look ominous. Now, speaking of Imperial Overlords, we should quickly mention that our corporate dad legendary produces this movie. But we are big enough Dune fans over here at Nerdist that we would be talking about this trailer anyways. So, with that out of the way, let's break this trailer down. And if you prefer to read all about it, Michael Walsh has you covered over on Nerdist.com. But fair warning, this trailer has some major reveals. So remember, he who can spoil a thing, controls a thing. Okay, let's get into it. First things first, let's check out Christopher Walken as the Padisha Emperor Shaddam Carino IV. Okie dokie, artichoke, first of all. No, that's balls of fury. Here we see Emperor Shaddam sitting in a garden on his homeworld, Kaitain, the capital of the Imperium. Beside him is his daughter, Princess Irulan, played by Florence Pugh. She tries to engage her father in a game of Kiops, which is a chess-like game in the world of Dune. Shaddam sits in silence, contemplating his plans within plans, and also how to not attract the worm. It was the Emperor who conspired with House Harkonnen in Dune Part 1 to destroy House Atreides, under the guise of the long-standing feud between those two houses. House Atreides was growing more and more popular among the other royal houses and could have contested the Emperor for power. The Atreides' voice is rising. And the Emperor is a jealous man. The Emperor provided three battalions of his fanatical Sardaukar troops to the Baron Harkonnen for his ambush on Arrakis. Book readers know that the Duke Leto Atreides is actually a distant cousin to Emperor Shaddam, and we can see this internal conflict play out on the Emperor's face. As the Imperium continues to believe that House Atreides is no more, we see Paul's time in the desert as he plans his revenge. Now that the Harkonnens have been reinstated as the governors of Arrakis, they've moved all of their stuff back in. We can see some gnarly H.R. Giger-esque architecture, just like we've seen on Gaty Prime. Paul's visions of piles of burning bodies have come true, but unfortunately, it's what's left of House Atreides after the Harkonnen attack. We also get plenty of shots of Duke Leto's portrait burning in the fires as well. Meanwhile, Paul leads the Fremen in a guerrilla war against the Harkonnens. Paul and Chani fight in Razias, which are semi-piratical raids, on Harkonnen spice harvesters and ornithopters. Just like in the battle in Dune Part 1, where the Atreides' shields contained their explosions, we can see the same effect on this ornithopter as Chani commands Paul to reload her rocket launcher. Reload! But the Harkonnens return with even more firepower as Beast Raban follows his uncle's orders to squeeze Arrakis and destroy the Fremen. So squeeze Raban. Squeeze hard. Yes, uncle. Rumors of a savior among the Fremen, known as Muad'Dib, have spread throughout the Imperium. The Emperor commands Baron Harkonnen, who then commands Beast Raban, to eliminate the supposed prophet. We see one of those nasty ships from Dune Part 1 unload a barrage of missiles onto what I assume is a Fremen CH. CHs are giant cave networks where the Fremen live, and it looks like we'll see plenty of these underground communities as Paul learns more about the Fremen culture. Next, we catch up with Gurney Halleck, played by Josh Brolin. I am so excited to see that one of my favorite scenes and one of my favorite lines from the book will make it into this movie. You young pup. You young pup. You young pup. Gurney ended up surviving the Battle of Arakeen when we last saw him in Dune Part 1. With me! He's been scratching out a living with spice smugglers out in the desert wastelands. In the book, Paul leads a team of Fremen raiders as they ambush a spice smuggling operation only to stop the attack when he realizes his old teacher and friend is among the smugglers. It's truly one of the most heartwarming scenes, and I cannot wait to see it play out on the big screen. Fingers crossed we also get a war pub, too. But Gurney means business, and has still never forgotten his hatred for the Harkonnens. They're not human, they're brutal! Later in the trailer, it looks like we'll get a bit of a departure from the book as we get a glorious showdown between Gurney and the Beast Raban. At one point in his younger life, Gurney was a slave on Gaty Prime. Beast Raban gave Gurney the scar on his cheek with an inkfine whip, and Gurney here looks like he will finally get his revenge. But as Gurney joins Paul in his guerrilla war, he quickly recognizes the power that Paul wields over the Fremen. He tells Paul to use the prophecy of the Mahdi, the promised messiah character from Fremen myth and legend. But Paul recognizes the dangers of this, because all that glitters is not the golden path. Here, the trailer begins stressing one of the core themes of Dune. Frank Herbert wrote this story with the idea that 
charismatic leaders ought to come with a warning label on their forehead. May be dangerous to your health. We should be wary of the powers that Messiah-like supermen have over the masses. Paul has seen visions of a future where his leadership unleashes a deadly jihad of fanatical followers across the universe. Different characters have vastly different reactions to the power of this prophecy. Paul's mother, the Lady Jessica, is a Bene Gesserit sister and knows the full manipulative capabilities of prophecy over the Fremen. Stilgar, a great leader among the Fremen, claims to see the holy signs as Paul fulfills the prophecy that Stilgar believes. And we also get Chani as part of her expanded role from the books, showing doubt as to if Paul is the true Mahdi for her people. But we know that the prophecies Paul fulfills are actually part of the Bene Gesserit's Missionaria Protectiva. Throughout the Imperium, the Bene Gesserit would seed superstitions on various worlds, and this process was called the Missionaria Protectiva. That means the Bene Gesserit has been at work here. Planting superstitions. One part of this plan, known as the Panoplia Propheticus, spread myths and legends that a Bene Gesserit sister could manipulate to control an entire people. In Dune Part 1, the Reverend Mother Helena Gaius Mohayim told Lady Jessica that the Bene Gesserit have laid out a path on Arrakis to protect both Jessica and Paul. On Arrakis, we have done all we can for you. A path has been laid. Lady Jessica looks to have already become a Reverend Mother by this point in the trailer and tells Paul that by using the Missionaria Protectiva, they are giving the Fremen hope. But Paul fights back, knowing that his visions have shown him the dark future where this path leads. Paul continues pushing the Fremen towards war, enough to gain the attention of the Emperor and his Sardaukar forces. We see a massive battle with a giant fortress in the background, one that book readers should recognize as the Emperor's encampment. The book describes it as a single metal hutment, many stories tall, reached out in a thousand meter circle from the base of the lighter, a tent composed of interlocking metal leaves. And I think it looks cool as hell in this trailer. Inside are the Emperor, his entire royal court, and five legions of Sardaukar. But this giant battle will culminate in a final duel between Paul and the Emperor's champion, Fade Rautha, played by Austin Butler. We see how vicious Fade can be in the gladiator pits on Gaty Prime, and now Paul will find out just how dangerous this Harkonnen truly is. I noticed in one quick shot, though, Paul still thinks about his lost friend Jamis. In the first trailer, we saw Paul honor his old friend and teacher Duncan by using his signature salute. But in this trailer, Paul pounds his chest before his fight, similar to how Jamis did before he fought Paul. But here, instead of chip and shatter, Paul's knife is covered in blood and splatter. And whose blood could that actually be? Will this knife duel play out like in the book? Is this the moment that Paul realizes he is doomed whether he lives or dies? If Paul loses this fight, he will become a martyr for his followers, unleashing the jihad from his visions. But if Paul survives, then his followers will believe nothing can oppose him, which then also unleashes the jihad from his visions. In the final shot of this trailer, we get a massive explosion, which book readers should recognize as the Atreides family atomics blasting a huge hole in the shield wall. The shield wall is the massive cliffs that protect Arakeen from sandworms and the rest of the vast desert. Atomic warfare is still a threat in the Dune universe. This is a book written in the 1960s after all, but it is extremely outlawed under an arrangement known as the Great Convention. In the Dune universe, all of the royal houses stockpile atomic weapons, but they have all agreed that if any one house were to use their weapons, everyone else would use their atomics to completely destroy that house from existence. But what happens if someone uses atomics while they're standing atop the only known source of the spice melange? We hear Paul say, he who can destroy a thing has the real control of it. And no, he doesn't say the classic line, he who controls the spice controls the universe. That was only in the 1984 movie. We'll see how Paul's spicy gamble pays off. Anyways, folks, that's everything we spotted in the latest trailer for Dune Part 2. While waiting for November 3rd, if you want to know any more upcoming Dune news, check out the rest of our coverage over on Nerdist.com. But in the meantime, tell us, what else did you spot in this trailer? What do you think about Christopher Walken as Emperor Shaddam? And where's Alia? You can't do that. Let us know in the comments below, and for the spiciest news in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com. Nerdist.com